Hello everyone. Good afternoon everybody. I'm Sanyukta from Beautiful Spotless Skin Team. I'm sure all of you must be keeping good health. You must have come across people with especially with women with the brown colored patches on their face. They seem like freckles like spots forming large flat patches. This is nothing but skin pigmentation. In India according to a study conducted across four indian cities revealed that more than 80% of the population presents skin color heterogeneity on the face irrespective of age and gender this is heterogeneity mainly this heterogeneity mainly results from hyperpigmented spot and melasma we know that sunscreen is valuable from a skin cancer and sun damage perspective as well as something that helps prevent fine lines and wrinkles several things about sunscreen that we people are not aware of and that makes us and that actually stops us from making sunscreen an integral part of our skin care routine so today on 27th may which is a national sunscreen day we have dr vandana punjabi live from mumbai to educate us more on sunscreen and pigmentation dr vandana punjabi has over 20 years of experience in private practice in the field of clinical dermatology aesthetic dermatology trichology women's and pediatric dermatology so let's start today's uh, instagram live let's connect with dr vandana punjabi welcome dr vandana how are you doing Hi, I'm good. How are you? Yes, are you I'm, uh, I'm absolutely fine. And today is a very important day because it's World Sunscreen Day, and sunscreen is something which is very essential for us. But still, many of us, I don't know why, they have some hurdles, some some prejudices uh, regarding sunscreen. But that stops them from using sunscreen. So they will try to break all the barriers that you know people normally have regarding sunscreen. So uh, to start with, Dr. Vandana, first of all, please tell us about pigmentation and what are the causes of pigmentation. We often see people with dark patches brown patches especially in women what are those so basically pigmentation is darkening of the skin where the melanin uh, skin cells which are the pigment cells start increasing and uh, this leads to patchy skin uneven skin color and uh, this could be divided into various types it could be something like a facial pigmentation as you mentioned rightly you know on the face Uh, which can be patchy, can be freckles, it can be because of acne marks. So uh, there are different uh, types of pigmentation on the face. Sometimes we also have it around the eyes, around the mouth. You know, um, sometimes it can be on the neck areas. Then there is a non-facial pigmentation which can be anywhere on the body. Like uh, we have a lot of darkening on the legs, on the arms, on the back. which could be because of um, different kind of conditions sometimes because of acne marks so um, basically there are lot of types of pigmentation it's very important to find out from your doctor the right uh, cause of a pigmentation what is the cause and then you will obviously treat the pigmentation accordingly right so first it's important to know the cause behind the pigmentation and for that only a dermatologist can help you so please go to a dermatologist if you see anything uh, you know any kind of patches on your face doctor now who are more prone to pigmentation women on one side we know they are prone we also know that pregnant women at many times experience pigmentation but they may fade uh, away uh, after some time so who are more prone to pigmentation So yeah, uh, it could be pregnant women. It could be uh, women are more prone to pigmentation, and uh, not only more prone, they are also more aware about it. They are more conscious about it. They are more keen to do treatment. But it's not only women nowadays. We have a lot of men also who are uh, interested in looking after their skin, and they are aware. And uh, it's you know in the uh, metro especially. So uh, it's it's both the uh, men and women can have pigmentation. We see some pigmentation in children also, which is of course a totally another topic. But uh, coming to the facial pigmentation, as you rightly said, it could be hormonal in women, you know, in the childbearing phase, or it could be menopausal. Um, that's one pigmentation. But we should understand that pigmentation is basically uh, a clumping of the melanin together. So this could be either patchy. as what you're saying hormonal but it could also be because of other causes such as you know it could be uh, maybe some kind of allergy which they had 
uh, which has led to darkening of the skin. Even this is pigmentation. It could be acne marks, which have left uh, the acne when it heal. That left pigmentation. Uh, it could be even because of um, some rubbing the skin or using the wrong scrub or using the wrong face wash. Sometimes that can lead to again, uh, you know, kind of a reaction on the skin, leaving pigmentation. So pigmentation is a very wide term, and uh, you have to go about it in a proper systematic way. Uh, we know when you come to the treatment, which we can probably discuss uh, as you go along, as we go along. Right. So there may be so many, you know, causes behind pigmentation. Now we also know, doctor, that there are various kind of skins: oily, dry, combination. There are sensitive skins as well. Any particular skin type which is more prone to pigmentation? Um. So yeah, you could say the dry skin, or it's not like that. That there is a particular skin type which is more prone. Of course, a sensitive skin type, and that's why probably we see pigmentation more in women, as you said, because the skin is more sensitive. But it could be it, it's seen also in other skin types. But it's more common with dry and sensitive skin. But again, oily skin also can get uh, pigmentation. So it's like anybody can get pigmentation. You have to check out what the cause of the pigmentation is. Right, so anybody can get pigmented skin. So be careful if you see any kind of patches. Please, please, please don't do anything by yourself. Just go and consult your dermatologist. Otherwise, you know what we normally do: we delay the whole thing, and that becomes more and more pathetic for the doctor to treat. Uh, now, doctor, the main thing today is the you know sunscreen day. We all know that sunscreen is so 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 vital for our skin protection. But still, people are there who don't use it. There, are, uh, data says that 67% of uh, people in India do not use sunscreen, which is really a serious concern. Now, my question is, how does sunscreen protect our skin from getting pigmented? So, uh, sunscreen uh, has got you know various ways to protect the skin. It uh, has got filters. So, the main important thing that it helps is uh, it damage. It protects us, blocks the basically the UVA and the UVB light, which everybody knows the ultraviolet light. But uh, so because this ultraviolet B, which is there, this causes burning of the skin. Which is a problem in Indian skin. So you see that you know we get more tan. And we get more uh, side effects of uh, sun, which is in the form of pigmentation. About there is skin aging, you know, photo damage. What it is called? This is caused by the UVA uh, rays. Green. There's all also a thing, a term which uh, makes us really curious that what it is and what. So please explain what does SPF level mean and why we should know. Yeah, before choosing our right sunscreen for us. So actually, uh, SPF is a sun protection factor, and uh, honestly, SPF is just telling us about how fast your skin can burn, which is not that much of an important uh, factor for Indian skin. So for Indian skin, which is called skin of color, a uh, brown skin, uh, any SPF above thirty is very good. Uh, if you are going to remain outdoors for a long time, then yes, SPF fifty is good. But uh, the difference between an SPF of 30 and 50 is very marginal. Uh, what we need to understand is uh, how important our sunblock is going to be in terms of UVA protection. Between 30 to 50 SPF is good for our skin. I think you lost me. I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we talked about SPF. We, we finished talking about SPF. Uh, Right, right. And um, the, I would also like you to talk about blue light and eye uh, you know, infrared rise that may cause pigmentation as well. So we normally know that sunscreen are good to protect our skin from the sun, but then there are other lights as well, especially because we are using so much of mobiles and computers these days. Even if you're, uh, we are working from home, the home is not sun protected or at least not light protected. Please comment on that. Yeah, you're right. So actually, uh, again, coming to the uh, previous topic about the, uh, you know, uh, UVA, what I was talking about, even UVA penetrates through the house, through the glasses. So indoors, as you mentioned, yes, we should have a sunscreen with UVA and UVB. 
but uh, very important nowadays the topic of blue light which has come out is blue light is actually part of the visible light so it's a light which we can see all around you know like where you me and everyone is sitting uh, we are in front of the computers laptops the leds so is this light which is emitted through this which has also now known to have a uh, you know damage on the skin and that's why nowadays the new sunscreens have filters for blue light uh, so that is very good because that again protects your skin from more uh, damage then the infrared light is actually what we get from very from the heat so you know there are times when we are in front of the gas and or we are you know in front of the fire or people go and sit even if it is a cool even if it is not uh, sunny but it's a heat so this heat is what is emitting the infrared rays and this again is known to actually worsen pigmentation especially the melasma pigmentation so people who are suffering so as i mentioned earlier there are lots of types of pigmentation but if you are looking at you know the patchy pigmentation the hormonal pigmentation which is very common as you rightly said uh, so for that pigmentation yes infrared protection or uh, sunscreen infrared uh, protection is very important Yes, yes, yes. So uh, that's the you know the whole idea behind using sunscreen. So even if you are indoors, please apply sunscreen as uh, the blue lights and infrared rays are equally uh, you know they can damage our skin. Uh, you know, doctor, whenever we go and try to choose a sunscreen for ourselves, it becomes really tough. because we don't know a uh, properly what our skin type is then how the you know the sunscreen will be effective how far that sunscreen is going to be effective so is there a way to uh, see how the effectiveness of a sunscreen how is the effectiveness of a sunscreen is measured so as i said earlier also that you should look for a broad spectrum uh, sunscreen first of all you see if you have a sensitive skin or a particular uh, skin with a problem skin you know or a skin with some concerns where you want to really get rid of some marks blemishes you know or have a kind of take the consultation or the advice of your we can guide you exactly what sunscreen is suited for your skin problems but assuming that you know you have very you just want something for a routine care uh, it is very important to have something a broad spectrum sunblock which will cover uva uvb and if you're indoors then try to see something which will also have the coverage for infrared as we talked about in blue light try to go for a sunblock which is you know um, friendly to your pocket because we don't want to spend to very um, fancy products but try to suit it to your skin type that's very important so if you have an oily skin or may prone skin where you break out occasionally go for a sunblock which is water based non comedogenic look for these uh, features in the sunscreen it's all written at the back all good products good companies write it mm-hmm. at the back um, it could be if you have a sensitive skin as we talked about go for hypoallergenic uh, products which where which can be used for people with sensitive skin if you are having dry skin or mature skin when you wake up in the morning you feel your skin is very stretched out dehydrated use for something use a moisturizing sunblock right right uh, uh, meanwhile uh, viewer shivani mishra is asking since i lead a very busy life i need to keep my routine simple what are the absolute skin care basics and of course i mean i think we will also like you to focus on the importance of sunscreen balance so basically the skin care or basics important is a cleansing you wash your face very simple shivani you wash your face twice a day morning night very important and you use a sunblock when you are at home so once a day at least you should use a sunblock if you are going outdoors try to reapply it half an hour before you go out that's very important if you are not going to be going out if you are just at indoors at least once a day you must apply and at night you could when you wash your face you can use um, you know like some um, night cream or a night serum some brightening serum some product which will go with your skin type and your skin concern so we need to see what concern you're looking at so maybe some vitamin c serum or a vitamin c cream will help you okay okay so that's important and uh, 
Sarita Ghamal is also here asking about hy- how can I prevent hyperpigmentation? I think this is a very basic question that many people, many viewers want to ask that how to prevent hyperpigmentation. So hyperpigmentation, see, we, as we said, most important thing is a sunblock. If you're going to use a sunblock, at least whatever pigmentation you have or you are prone for it, at least we can kind of stop it to that point. And uh, of course, how do you prevent hyperpigmentation? Again, you know, eating well, taking care of your diet, not rubbing the skin, not scrubbing the skin. Because the more you're going to rub, the more you break your acne, you're left with marks, hyperpigmentation. So you just take care and not try to do too much to your skin. Sometimes that is also damaging. And at night, you take care of it but with some, you know, lightening serum if you have pigmentation. Okay. Doctor, tell me one thing. If I want and go to get, uh, you know, sunscreen for myself, uh, for example, I'm, uh, I understand my skin type. Can I just go and buy thing, anything, uh, buy any sunscreen over the counter or from any, you know, the toiletry shop or do I need to consult my dermatologist before buying a sunscreen for my skin? Uh, now that depends how interested you are in uh, if you if you think you would like to go the dermatologist of course as we talked about is a right person to guide you um, you should go but in case you feel key, you don't have a problem you just want some routine sunscreen it should be a good brand always make sure you don't compromise on the brand but if you have any concern which you're looking to treat you know like you're looking at some pigmentation around the eyes or pigmentation around the mouth or you're looking at some fine lines, some patchiness, it's always better to go to the dermatologist. They'll guide you on the right kind of skin. So um, getting a word from the dermatologist is always better. Diagnose our skin problems at our level or really we need an expert for that? I think that's a very um, obvious answer. Obviously, I mean, you know, you have to go to the expert. Um, because right. a lot of people, Google is not the doctor which we know. Google gives you a range of stuff which scare you sometimes. So it's always better to go to the expert for the right advice. So and to get the minimum. Uh, right. Uh, right now we are talking about sunscreens and but we are also trying to address the issue of pigmentation. Uh, I would like to ask you doctor, is there just suns will actually prevent us from hyperpigmentation uh, or there are other things as well? Like we always say that a healthy lifestyle is what you need for a glowing skin. Uh, does the same stand for uh, no pigmentation on your skin? Do we need to keep ourselves hydrated or eat good? Are there anything that, uh, you know, the intake will actually make our skin better and prevent us from uh, pigmentation? Yeah, of course. I mean, a healthy diet is very important. So that's why we always say you have a lot of fruits, vegetables. So having a diet, uh, you know, rich of antioxidants like beta carotene, vitamin C, you know, nuts, and uh, say flax seeds, all of that has got uh, omega-3. So all this has got a lot of sun protection and uh, it improves your skin color, prevents you from hyperpigmentation and uh, eating healthy is very important for a uh, growing skin. So uh, daily skincare routine that will keep our skin So I, I think I, we already talked about this, you know, having a basic cleanser, as I said, a daily skincare routine. Um, you wash your face twice a day. You put a sunblock in the day and um, at night you have some kind of a skin serum or, or a night cream, depending on your skin type. And uh, that's good. You're good to go. If you wish to wear any makeup, like we have a lot of people, you know, women who are going out, who want to work. Or outdoors who need to, to use makeup, you can use that on top of your sunscreen. So there has to be a layering, a layering technique where you use your sunscreen first, and then you put your uh, makeup on top. Uh, that uh, a lot of times the makeup also has some amount of SPF, so that also adds to your uh, sun protection. And of course, eating healthy, looking after your overall health, exercising very important for the skin. Um, stress management very important you know no matter what you do it's of course how you how you feel mentally how your 
you know stress how how stress free or relaxed you are so all that is important for um, your day to day routine okay right so uh, along with the skin care routine you actually need to just relax be stress free and eat good drink well uh, shubham maran is here asking what sunscreen should i use for a combination skin and how do i treat my whiteheads on face mainly the nose so um see i'm not uh, i will not be giving any kind of a prescription over here obviously so shubham since you have a combination skin uh, you should use something which is formulated for um, combination skin or oily to combination skin so if you go and look at the good brands you will see a lot of sunblocks which have got written written on that uh, oil free non comedogenic so you need to use those kind of sunblocks so that you don't aggravate and uh, again coming to the white heads on the nose you need to use a gel or you know a cream for the white heads which will be prescribed by your doctor depending on the type of skin that you have which will help to get rid of the white heads right uh, when you uh, when we hit the market we see that there are so many forms of sunscreen available like we have spray gel cream lotion how to choose the suitable for a uh, you know the suitable one for an individual skin and um, uh, does it again because you have already mentioned that if you have a oily skin go for a gel based um, you know sunscreen so of course skin type is essential but still out of all these so many formulations what should be the best one for me so again it's depend on your skin type um if you're going to be traveling like we have a lot of people going for holidays now with the um, you know may june july you can buy the spray one also for the body area so if you're going to go to the beach or going for a holiday outdoors a spray sunblock or a lotion sunblock is easy to apply on the body and um, you know larger areas um, full family can apply so it works out to be more economical so a spray or a lotion works for larger body areas for the face and generally the body areas are little drier so a lotion based product is good but for the face of course as i mentioned you have to go according to your skin type so generally you should try do try to use the same sunblock on your face and body because your face skin may be oily but while the body may be dry your body arms and legs so keep a separate one for arms or legs when you're going outdoors and on the face you use the one which i mentioned depending so the gel base as we discussed is for oily skin or you know the acne prone skin then we have um, the moisture rich ones which are the moisturizing ones hypoallergenic for sensitive skin so you just ch- check and of course if it see it should be a good company good reputed company you know so that you don't get any allergies any rashes then you look for broad spectrum broad spectrum is very important because it's uva uvb now if you have a very sensitive skin suppose somebody is very sensitive then we try to go for a chemical free sunblock like you know there are people who can't use a sunblock they get watering around the eyes they get itching around the eyes burning on the face so then you use something which is a chemical free which is called zinc oxide or uh, titanium uh, oxide which is good for people with sensitive skin or even for children so you know it's see it's important to see your skin type your type your concerns and then you choose a sunblock Right, so it's important to see your skin type first, and then choose the best sunscreen. With uh, you know, with regard to all the things that doctor has just mentioned, uh, a doctor, I would also like to know, like if uh, you know, nowadays after this corona thing, uh, people are working from home more and they are going out less. This trend is going to continue for some more time. It looks, yeah. Uh, but Uh, when they are inside they say that you know we are safe we can't get pigmented skin and even if we are going out we'll use some uh, umbrella or a hat or a cap maybe and that will protect our skin from the harsh sun is it true uh, can the clothing that we cover our body parts with uh, have some amount of spf or uh, do we need to actually add sunscreen as well to get the proper protection <coughs> So see at home of course as we mentioned a sunblock is very important because we want to block the uv a rays primarily the infrared and the blue light now these are all coming indoors so you know we, i had a lot of patients all through lockdown the skin got worse as compared to what it was before when daily they were going out and wearing a sunblock 
So when they were at home, they stopped wearing sunblock because they thought, as you said, we are at home, no need to wear a sunblock, and the skin would more pigmented, more tanned, more damaged. So it's very important to wear it at least once a day at home. When you go out, of course, you know um, you can add it up, as you said, with different things like you know a hat, a cap, full sleeves. But sometimes an umbrella, it's always good. They do help. They're very important, but. the kind of humidity that we live in in our city of mumbai it's very difficult you may not be able to do all of these things but if you can it's definitely added so these are all adjuvants which you use over and above your sunblock but they don't instead of the sunblock they cannot replace the sunblock right uh there is a viewer um, riya sharma asking i have seen a lot of beauty products with mint in them lately are there uh, are there any actual uh, benefits to using such products with mint or is this just a trend i think it's just a trend mint it will smell good it will give you a little bit of probably tingling uh, sensation on the face like a menthol when you apply but um, it's got no added advantage in terms of benefits it's just a feel good factor okay so if you want to pamper yourself with some mint um, you know sometimes in fact the mint could also give allergy to some people so okay, if right. you have a sensitive skin we try to avoid uh, these products on the skin right completely agree with you pooja fernandez is asking how to get rid of sweating and ash uh, you know the sweating uh, question has been raised i also know many people who complain that when they apply sunscreen they sweat a lot and that's the reason they do not use sunscreen so uh, would you like to comment on that yeah sure so uh, this is a very important uh, point uh, as rightly brought out by pooja uh, that yeah we do sweat because a lot of people is very humid out here in mumbai at least so one important thing is you put the sunblock about half an hour before you leave or at least 15 20 minutes before you leave the house and you wait under the fan to kind of dry the sunblock because if you just apply and you go out you're going to sweat profusely because it's very humid outside and minutes before you leave the house you could dab a little bit of you know compact or a talcum powder on the skin so that it just gives you a matte finish try to go for a very matte sunblock if you have a sweating problem go for a very matte sunblock but you can always mat it up with a compact or a powder and uh, if you still feel very sweaty then you could just stick probably a tissue once you're outdoors and just dab the skin so that whatever sweat is there is coming out but you're not rubbing off the skin so that you're not removing the sunblock if you're going to rub the skin the sunblock will be gone and then you know people say i use a best sunblock it didn't work because you didn't use it properly you know so it won't work right right and there are people who go for swimming who do extensive workouts who go gymming and you know they sweat a lot again there is this barrier in their mind that you know sunscreen is not going to stay on us then how to make it work so you have a lot of sunblocks which are said a matte finish and they water based products and they also are uh, you know formulated for people with sweaty skin people who are the aqua based products which are going when they going swimming you know so you can use it then they are water resistant plus they are matte finish so if there are such products available you just have to find the right product maybe your doctor will guide you if you are not able to do that and they definitely help you and they will not cause the sweating to happen that much and of course some amount of sweating is going to happen when you are going to be gymming but it's not going to get completely washed off the sunblock uh, because it's a water based product right right So choose the right kind of sunscreen as for for your you know um, routine. That's very important, and of yeah. course, skin type is the most important thing to yeah. keep in mind while purchasing a sunscreen. Uh, doctor, again, uh, if we come back to the topic of pigmentation, there are people who uh, have the problem of pigmentation, and they also have this doubt in their minds: is it uh, is this problem hereditary? Can it be hereditary? if my parents have this problem or anybody in the family have this problem of pigmentation are there chances that i'll also get a pigmented skin 
Oh uh, yeah, so it, it can be some pigmentation can be hereditary, you know, like we have pigmentation around the eyes is sometimes hereditary. Uh, there are some pigmentation on the sides of the face, uh, which is called as pigmentary demarcation lines. Sometimes you have that pigmentation that could be hereditary. So there are a lot of people who say my mom has the same pigmentation and I have it or my dad has the same pigmentation. Sometimes, uh, you know, pigmentation around the mouth can um, be hereditary. So, of course, but there are ways that you can take care of it. It is hereditary. That means you are prone for that pigmentation. But you can still take care of it. You can still reduce it. Still um, rejuvenate your skin with the sunblock, with the night creams, the serums. So, there are treatment, you know, options which are available, which can be taken, can be done for them. Right. Um, another viewer, uh, Ria is again here asking, does sunscreen go on before or after moisturizer? Though you have already answered this, but still again, because I can see two, three questions about the same that do we need to apply moisturizer even if we are using sunscreen? Please um, enlighten us on that. Yeah, so yeah, so that's called layering of the products basically. Now it depends again what weather you are staying in and what kind of skin you have. So if you are staying in a humid weather, you're very prone to sweating, then you cannot use so many products. You cannot use a moisturizer and a sunblock. So then you just choose only the sunblock because most sunblocks, they also have some moisturizer, inbuilt moisturizer in them. And that's why they give you a little bit of hydration. So you use only the sunblock, but if you have a dry skin or you live in a dry weather or whether it may be hot, but the weather is very dry, you know, like probably North India, then you can use a moisturizer first, wait for like two, three minutes let, or five minutes, let the moisturizer get soaked into the skin and then you top it up with a sunblock and then you top it up with a makeup after five minutes if you wish to or a compact, whatever you want. But in a human weather, we just go with only one product. You cannot do so many things. Sorry, I, I didn't get that. Right, so that's the way. So now as you're asking, I have oily skin. Do I still need to use moisturizer? Yeah, uh, Sonali no, is asking, just mentioned she's having a, a oily skin. Uh, we already skin. just covered that, Sonali, that if you have a oily skin, you can't put a moisturizer and a sunblock. So you just go with an oil-free sunblock. If you feel that your skin is feeling dry, only then you put an oil-free moisturizer and top it up with an oil-free sunscreen. But it's not necessary to use a moisturizer, especially in humidity in the summer or the monsoons you may probably just require a moisturizer when the season changes and it's a little dry so that's when you put the moisturizer and the sunblock so you need to change it according to your skin every season right uh, another viewer is asking can i put moisturizer over steroid cream now there's also a lot of uh, you know people go and buy creams uh, over the counter they are steroid, they do contain steroid. Now her question is, can I put moisturizer on steroid cream? So I think, uh, see, depends what condition she's using the steroid cream for. And if you're using a steroid cream, you better use it only if it's being prescribed by your dermatologist because steroid creams should not be used without the consultation of your doctor. So if your doctor has advised you, please check with your doctor why you've been given for what, for how long. Because indefin indefinite use of steroid cream is going to cause a lot of damage, steroid uh, damage on your face, on your body. So I would not answer that question because you better ask your doctor who's prescribed it. Because these should be given only on prescription. Though they're easily available over the counter, please do not use them. They're very uh, strong and they can cause side effects without uh, the supervision of your doctor. Right, so please stay away from steroid creams. Don't just go and buy anything. Be, be very careful because it may harm your skin and the harm can be, you know, uh, really uh, repairable. So please be careful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, a doctor, another uh, viewer is uh, yeah, asking, can we use 
screen on acne prone skin though you have already addressed this Please. but then we are getting a lot of viewers asking the same question i think another hurdle again is that you know uh, what stops them from using sunscreen as we have already discussed is that they have a oily or acne prone skin though gel or other forms of uh, you know sunscreen is still available still what would you like to tell them because that that you know a bias is not going away from their mind so actually you see uh, acne is um, you know multi factorial we have a lot of causes for acne you need to get the acne treated and one of the treatments of acne is using an acne uh, sunscreen prone for acne skin because we want to take care of the marks we want to take care of the blemishes the scars the hyperpigmentation on your face so sunscreen is one of the key ingredients for treating your acne and acne really? marks and uh, you know but you need to of course choose a sunscreen which is formulated for acne skin so it should be oil free non comedogenic and i'm sure your doctor will guide you and there are very nice companies nice brands which have got sunscreen specially for acne prone skin and you can use those sunscreens right so you if you have a skin related issue problem please consult your dermatologist first before buying anything and they will guide you the best possible way that's right uh one last question i'd like to pick uh, one of our viewers are asking how do i keep my brown spots from becoming more prominent and this is so common in people or us please uh, comment on that Yeah, so as we said, sunscreen, sunscreen, and sunscreen. You use sunscreen every day, all three sixty-five days of the year, and uh, of course, there are a lot of other things which can be used at night, like topical creams, serums containing glycolic acid, retinoic acid, salicylic, kojic acid. So they're all there. Your doctor will guide you depending on the cause of your hyperpigmentation. If if you if she feels or he feels that you need to go for some treatments, there are a lot of other treatments which can be done for hyperpigmentation, like peels, lasers. All that can be done to treat the hyperpigmentation. Of course, depending on why you have it, what is the cause, what are the triggers. So we need to get to the problem and find out the solution. You and your doctor need to work together and find out. So it's not like just one cream that you can give all the people. It has to be very customized depending on your concerns. right very well um, said doctor it's very important that you know a we take care of our skin make you know, do whatever it takes to keep us healthy but then it's very important again to visit a dermatologist or a skin expert before going for anything that may actually harm your skin so don't be your be a doctor by yourself but go and consult a dermatologist if you have any 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 kind of skin issues thank you so very much dr vandana punjabi uh, for your valuable time ma'am it has been very very informative session and it is uh, great to hear you we really look forward for many more such times thank you so very much thank you so much for uh, the session i must thank uh the organizers and the beautiful spotless skin uh, page to give me a chance to reach so many people and inform them about the importance of sunblock in today's uh, being world sunscreen national sunscreen day and uh, please everybody start using our sunblock all 365 days of the year that is one message i would like to give everybody to have a youthful skin Right, so please start from today if from you today. have not <laughs> start using sunscreen. Uh, we would also like to thank our viewers uh, for participating in today's session. And if you want to consult Dr. Vandana Punjabi, you can book consultation on nine seven zero two eight eight zero zero two two. You may call SMS or WhatsApp on this number to book the consultation. You can also call zero two two, which is the code of Mumbai. Two six four nine seven four seven five is the phone number. Uh, you can mail uh, her on uh, Vandana R P at email dot com. And for more update, you can visit to website www dot vandana punjabi dot com. It's all good. Thank you, Vandana. Thanks so much for being such a lovely host. It was so nice, and the audience it's was so nice, so, so interactive. I'm happy the session was good, and I'm happy. I hope people have really taken home the point and you know use a sunblock every day. 
indeed i'm hoping and uh, you know praying for the same that if they have not yet then they will yes, start they will just start it right starts from tomorrow come tomorrow the session <laughs> so uh, let's be positive about it thank you so very much and thank you everyone stay connected uh, to our beautiful spotless skin page thank you thank you so much